Present a little work, uh, God's word. I'm not, I'm not as long-winded as David is. <laughs> uh, I'll give you, I'll give you a little bit of what he would give you. <laughs> Let him finish it from there. <laughs> Everything. But you know, one, one place. You know, uh, this, this is just the building. That's it. It's all, all, all it is for us to come and worship. Yes. In these old uh, buildings that we've got here, mm -hmm. that we call the Bible calls the old man mm -hmm. and everything. Old man all the time giving us trouble. That's right. Uh -huh. he, he, he does me and everything. I, I finally, last night I finally got a, a decent night's sleep mm. and everything. So it might have changed my look, so I might break the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not used to getting a, a decent night's sleep. I got I got some medical medical problems and everything. I don't I don't I don't sleep like like I ought, I ought to and everything. But uh, the good Lord knows, and the Lord the Lord's helped me now through through the years and everything with my medical problems and and everything and. Uh, uh, that's why I'm glad I, I got to know the Lord uh, not long after I got out of the service. Praise the Lord. And that's when I went and started going over to saw a climb dance. It's not, not long after me and my wife got saved. Uh, I think it was maybe about a year, year and a half after we got saved, we started going to, to his, his church and everything. And, and not one, I, I examined everybody and uh, whether David, uh, Brother David, uh, uh, realizes or not, I examine him all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, because uh, I remember the first church where Charles Condon was, was preaching, I can't remember where it was at, but I know it was out in the middle of a field somewhere, and everything, a little church, something like this. and. Uh, Everything and uh, I, I went there. There have been some things uh, happen. I can't remember what it was anymore. Everything, nothing wrong with my mind. Just a little, little short. Everything, you know, it's kind of, kind of hard to, to remember what happened uh, 50 years ago and everything. You know, because my wife takes and tells me. Uh, that I can't even remember it. I can take and get a loaf of bread when I go to the, go to the <laughs> store. <laughs> so so something something definitely definitely wrong uh, there. I don't know if it's my mind or my old age. I don't know which it is. <laughs> but one of them, one of them's working on me uh, and everything. But one one place that in this whole building that is more important. In anything in this building. And anybody take and tell me what that right is. Right where you're standing. Right where I'm standing. Amen. Behind this pulpit. Amen. This pulpit, uh, of, according to us in the flesh, this is the holiest of holy. Uh, only certain people are supposed to stand behind the, this pulpit and uh, I'm not always feel like I'm worthy to stand behind it and everything, and I imagine David feels the same way uh, uh, some, sometimes because, you know, little things happen to, to it, the devil takes take and gets a hold of us and makes us uh, do things that we, that we shouldn't do or we normally wouldn't do, and then when we get behind the pulpit, we just don't feel exactly right, right if, if when we have a good day, <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, that's why I like having a good a, a, a good day and everything. I, I have the tendency to smile and laugh once in a while, and, but uh, sometimes I take and fake it. Fake it. And I fake it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, uh, no, no. I, I, I've been been uh, I've been accused uh, before of doing a, a good thing, and and. Uh, my wife is one of them that, that, that's done it before 
and I'm thanked to see. So why do you all, when you come into church, why do you go around and shake everybody's hand uh, when you come in? You know, because it didn't make any difference to you come in, when they come in, and everything. I make it a point to get out of my seat and get up and I go shake the hand. That's it, ain't nothing wrong with it. It's just some, something, something that's always uh, uh, been in me that I feel like that whenever, whether they be visitors or, or the brother and sister in the Lord of, of, of the church, I'm the brother and sister of the Lord. Yeah, uh, and everything. Uh, we should always shake one another's hand and, and shake it like we mean. I've had people shake my hand and they, I knew they didn't mean it. <laughs> especially, especially after I finished preaching and everything. I had a preacher come up and give me a cold handshake <laughs> and take and tell me, Brother. Uh, brother Peter, he called me Brother Peter. You all call me Brother Earl. You can call me anything you want to. Just don't call me late for supper. That's it. That's it. Uh, that, that, yeah, that, 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 that's the whole thing. And uh, he said, I didn't like what you what you said, and it was because I was stepping on this toe. That's it. You know, have have any y'all ever had your toes stepped on? Oh, yeah. Many times. I might step on it. I might step on on it this morning. Hang on. And if I'm not stepping hard enough, let me know. I can step. I can step a little bit hard. <laughs> yeah. uh, I've been in churches and everything, and heard preachers talk, and they walked all over my toes and everything. I reached up there, take my my shoe, rub it up against my pants, and everything. Get all the dirt uh, off my shoes and say, Go ahead and preach, brother. Keep on preaching. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's the kind of attitude that we, we ought to have with the Word of God because we don't always come up to fire with the Word of God, and sometimes it does us good to get our toes stepped on and everything to take and get us in line. And I'm talking about myself too. Uh, uh, when it when it comes to that and everything uh, and everything, and uh, I, I've even said to my wife wife before, I said I don't know why, I said, but I'm just I'm just so down and out, and I don't I don't understand why. But sometimes we get we get like that. We let the devil uh, come in and. Uh, I thought I had my handkerchief up there with me, but I don't. But uh, here, here we go. Just right in the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, uh, I've preached in some different churches and everything. And uh, thank you, brother. Welcome, brother. And uh, everything. Uh, I got I got tangled up with this woman preacher one time and everything and it was it was the worst time I ever had in my life with a woman with a woman preacher. Now I ain't got nothing I, I don't exactly agree with having one women preachers, but but the ones I've always it seemed like the ones I always come in contact with I have a hard time with. I don't know how it is with you brother. But I have a hard time with them because they, I don't know whether they don't like what I what I say. Or they don't like my looks. If they don't like my looks, I can't do nothing about that. That's right. You know. And uh, so so anyway, she, uh, uh, they 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 was uh, uh, getting ready to build a build a church that doesn't have the foundation laid, and I was going to take and help them put the plumbing. Uh, as much as I could uh, in in that building, and I went I went I went to that building that morning, and there was none of them there. Well, I noticed there was one of her congregation lived next door, and her husband was outside. So I said, you know, be a good question, you know, since I know her, but I don't know him. I walked over and I started talking to him, you know. And everything, real nice guy, 
you know, no, no, no problems at, at, at all and everything. And uh, all, all of a sudden, his wife stuck her head out the door and said, Sister, so-and-so wants to talk to you. I went and asked for the phone, and she said, What are you doing over there to their house? You're supposed to be over to the church. That didn't sit too good with me at all. Uh -huh. <laughs> not, not at all. I said, all right, I said, I'll take go on over to the church because I'd waited for him. I don't know how long before then. I went and on my way to the church, I stopped to talk to her husband for just a second. And I think she stuck her head out the door and said, uh, Sister so-and-so wants to talk to you. I said, what in the world she want to talk to me about now? I said, she doesn't talk to me once. She said, I thought I told you to get over there to the church and everything. And there you stop and talk to him. <laughs> um, I mean, she was, she was something else. And I, and I preached for her one, uh, one time. She, she Got, got her a church to temporary uh, preaching, I believe it's out, out there again, more I can't rem remember, but when I had to come to find out that her and her sister in the Lord that was in her congregation, that she didn't get along with her husband. And that's why she didn't want me to take and be over her talking to her. Is that, is that a good Christian attitude? No. No. No, it's, you know, it's not. And everything. Regardless of what anybody does to us or says to us and everything, we're supposed to take and keep a good Christian attitude. That's right. That's right. That's right. You know, sometimes it's hard. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you feel like taking your fist in, just, just <laughs> smack them mm -hmm. upside the Side the nose or something like that and everything, but we still got to keep a good Christian attitude. And everything said, Lord, keep me from hitting him. Uh -huh. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to read here first from Galatians, uh, the fifth chapter, starting the 16th verse. I'm going, to read, I'm going to read down to the 21st verse. I might read farther than that. I've got it marked down as farther, farther than that, but uh, I believe that probably be where I'll stop at. So I have to turn that over. I had that paper turned over on the side of my name on it, and I ain't going to preach on me. I'm not no Apostle Paul or anything like that. Uh, but that thing, uh, uh, I know, know the Lord knew what he was doing. Even, even though the Lord, he handpicked the, the, the disciples and everything, he knew exactly what they were going to do. That's it. He knew what Judas was going to do. Yes. Judas took and betrayed him, yep. tur tur turned and, 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 and went, went to the priest. And that, and said, I'll take him and show you, I'll tell you who he is if you give me 30 pieces of silver. Right. 30 pieces of silver wasn't very much mm -hmm. and everything. But Jesus knew that he was going to do it. And he said, go do what you have to do. That's it. And yes. I'm paraphrasing that a little bit because I can't remember. I don't think I right. remember word for word for word. But that's basically what he did what he said. Yes. And what did the disciples do, especially Peter? Uh, the Lord took and told him, said, this day you would deny me thice. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, Lord, I won't, I won't do that. I'm going to stick beside of you. I'm going to stick beside of What did he do? He, he did exactly what the Lord said. He denied him three, time, three times and when, when the cock crowed and everything. Uh, Peter knew exactly what he had done. Yes. And he, he went off sorrowful. And through all that, all the things that they had done wrong, 
against the Lord, turned her back completely on him. The Lord still saw fit for them to take and be his disciples and to present his word to each and every one of us. And that's the way it is with me and David and another pre or should be with, with other preachers and everything, uh, re regardless uh, of everything, we should always present the word of God to, to everybody that we come in contact with. And I, I've, uh, I've seen people get almost, get, get in a fight uh, over preaching the, the, the gospel. Somebody come along and start fussing at them. Everything wound, wound up having the boys there and everything, you know. And that's the way our country is today. Our country is not where it was at 100 years ago. That's no. right. It's not where it was at 150 years ago. Our forefathers didn't do everything exactly right. But let me take and tell you one thing. Our forefathers had God in the heart. Yes. They put God before they did uh, anything else. Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, there, there was times in, in their lives that they realized they made a mistake. They could, they could have done things a little bit different. That's right. But they still stuck beside God. They still believed in God that God could take and heal. Amen. That God could take care of all their problems. Yes. Take care of their crops. Even when the storms come by and everything and the hail come down and the hard rain come down and everything destroyed their, their crop and everything, they still kept their, their faith in Jesus Christ. They didn't sit around moaning and groaning and everything like, like people do today. And you, we've got a lot of moaning and groaning. Oh my God. I mean, Amen. They're, 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 they're everywhere. Yes. They, they just didn't step back and say, well, my crops, my crop growing, I won't get nothing out of it. They got up and they, if they had to walk for miles, they walked for miles till they took and found a job that they could get enough money to to uh, keep them through through the winter. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because back then it was very important that you had things stocked up. It's not it's not like like today and everything in regards to what the weather is, the stores always open. Right. Mm -hmm. Everything. They don't they don't close for nothing. They have to be awful bad for a store to take and close. But our that's the way our forefathers uh, were and everything and and uh, uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of Sheppy, Robert Sheppy. He was he was a circuit rider and everything. And uh, he he got saved when he was about I think about 19 years old. Him and some boys went went to a church to take him not to do anything any good. <laughs> they, they went there for the wrong reason and. Uh, so any, anyway, when the preacher was getting ready to quit preaching, and, it, and uh, I mean, it was a little old tiny church. This, this here, the church here is three times as big as that church was. And they had, they had the old wood stove there, and they had that chuck full. But all of a sudden, these boys he was with, he was a rich boy. He, he was, he was, he, he was a, one of these silver spoon uh, boys that was, that was fed with a silver spoon when he was when he was little, and his aunt took him took him in and, and raised him because his parents uh, were killed and everything. But anyway, at that at that meeting and everything, he heard something that he had never heard before, and that was the gospel preached the way that it should have been preached. Mm -hmm. Those boys started, they took some corn cobs with them. And they, you know what they were intending on doing with those corn cobs, uh, Brother David. Uh, that, they, uh, they had some good pitching on them. And so they started pitch, throwing, throwing corn cobs there in the church and everything. Anyway, the first thing you do, uh, Brother Shepherd got up and uh, took a bucket and 
put it over top of one one boy's head and everything and knock 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 him down and the husband asked and said, Well what's wrong with you, Robert? Well he stayed there and that that elderly man that, that was preaching led him to the Lord. And he got a lot, a lot of of criticism from expected from his aunt because they was in the, the high uh, uh, we went to where to look for uh, they, they, were, they were rich rich people they was on the high society that's the word I was looking for of, of things and she he went home and told his aunt that, that he'd gotten saved she said you mean you went down there to that old church down there to the people down there and he said yes he said, I didn't. He said, said I give my heart to the Lord. She said, well, you could have gone to our church and, and, and give, you, give your heart to the Lord. He said, no. He said, I, he said, I ain't never heard at our church what I heard there. And he went on from there and he lived with God from, from, that, from, that, day, from that day on until he died. And he had trouble with one woman that he met at the campground and everything. And uh, he got, got talking to her that first time and she told him, told him a red rose. And she said, said, I'm not surrendering. And told him a red rose and he put that in his Bible. And every time she come to that tent meeting, she'd give him a red rose and everything. But at the end when he, when he died, and he, he was right old when he died, and everything that at his funeral, she took the third a white rose that down on top of his casket, but it was a symbol that she surrendered. Hmm. And each and every one of us here, you know, need to surrender our whole life yes. uh, to God in, in everything that we we do, and especially in in our, in our thinking. And everything. Sometimes we're not as close to God as we think we are. Mm -hmm. So sometimes there there's things there that we don't really realize that we're doing we're doing wrong and everything. Because I know there's been times down through the years and everything I found out I was doing some things wrong. And I said, Well, Earl, you gotta straighten yourself up. You know, you you just you're just not a, a, up to par and everything, but uh, it says here, starting with the 16th verse, it says, "This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary." the one to the other. So, so that <clears throat> so you cannot do the thing that you that you would. But does it say there, says if we don't walk in the spirit that we can't take and do the things that we ought that we ought to take, take and do. So we have to take and walk uh, with the Lord each and every day. <clears throat> Okay, it says, but if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these? Adultery, fortification, uncleanness, luxuriousness, adultery, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, simulations, heresies. Uh, envyings, murders, drunkenness, re revilings, and such like, uh, like, or or of which I tell you, told you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I know a young lady right now, she's in jail right now and everything, and especially when she's drinking, she got locked back up, so she's 
back in jail again. Yet since I've known her, this probably about the tenth time she's been in jail. Man. And her thing she messes up seems she comes back out, does something against her parole and her thing. And when she's drunk, they take and hear her her talk that she's the greatest saint that ever walked the face of earth. And ain't no drunker gonna make it into heaven. So it ain't no sense that for them to stand there and say, well, I love God. Let me tell you something. If you really love your parents, you're not going to take and do things against your parents to hurt their feelings or anything. That's right. And this young lady, she tells her mother all the time, she said, Mom, I love you, but she goes out, get drunk, and just lays all over the floor and everything, and everything, and her mother just takes and tells her, said, no, you don't. You don't love me. But you know one thing? God loves us. Amen. Yes, he does. Amen. Regardless of what we do, and everything, he loves us. Even, even through these things that he mentioned, with the adultery, uh, witchcraft, uh, hatred, variance, uh, emulations, wrath, strife, uh, simulations, heresy, envy, murders, drunk drunkenness, reviling, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past. Now, see what he just said here? Things that I have told you in time past. And he said, told you in time past, and they which do things, such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. He, he told them in times past, he's telling them now here in, in the scripture where he said in the scripture that these things are wrong and we cannot take and serve God and, and do, the, do these things. Uh, I like where he's taking uh, turn over uh, with me, Galatians. Uh, Okay. Yeah, uh, I'll read uh, Galatians, okay, the six, 5, 16. 5, 16, I already read that. Okay, I've got something wrote down here wrong. You ain't never read, wrote something down wrong, have you, brother? No, I know Are you. you, <laughs> you take, take the scripture, take the scripture, he, 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 he to put, put the, the book, uh, in there wrong, or you put the right book in there, but you put the wrong scripture. Right. right. You know, you know, I know you ain't nobody ever ever done that. <laughs> I, I've done it. I've done it more than once. It looked like me that uh, uh, that 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 I, that I did it uh, again. Uh, let's go to Romans eight and six. Romans eight and six. Romans 8 and 6. So I'll, I'll take and start on up here a little bit farther. Uh, I'll just start at the first verse. It says, uh, Here, there, there is therefore no condemnation to them which in Christ. Uh, Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Jesus Christ has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law would not do, it would, it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and sin condemned sin in the flesh. Uh, that, the, that the righteous 
of the law might uh, be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Mm -hmm. For they that walk after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Amen. But they that are after the spirit of the things of the spirit. That's right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get. Amen. I'm gonna get David to come over here for a minute. Everything. There's a constant warfare, constant warfare between us and what we do, and in, in, in serving God and everything. Now this is David. This is David Fraser. Anybody? Everybody knows David Fraser. And I'm gonna get behind him, and I'm gonna make out I'm the I'm the Spirit of God in him and everything. And he's got a fight going on. Boy, he wants to swing those, those discs up and down like that. And everything. Slap, slap his wife upside the face there a little bit. And everything. See? But here's the Spirit of God. The Spirit within him is taking pulling this way. Uh -huh. But what does the flesh do? Oh, brother, that, oh, right. brother, I got more strength than that. <laughs> <laughs> that, that that's, what ha that's what happens when we're, fight, when we're fighting right. against the Spirit of right. God. The Spirit's pulling this way, right. and the devil is pulling back the other way. Amen. And, Amen. and unless we get our minds and, and, and our spirits in contact with God that's right. and everything, Amen. He's, what's going to happen when he pulls? Gonna break loose. It's gonna lose out. Lose, lose out on God. Amen. I didn't pull on you too hard. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. So we've got that constant warfare. That Amen. We've got. We've got to take and go through, and everything. I go through it. I find times, everything that I can't. It seems like I can't take and, and, and feel. Feel the spirit of God like a like an oak to and everything, and I know that somewhere out somewhere I might be doing something wrong. I, sometimes I don't know what I don't know what it is, but but uh, I'll, I'll take it do it. David makes a good example. He's a good actor. I have to get him next time to do, <laughs> do something yeah. and everything. But where are we walking with God? I'm asking each and every one of us, even myself, this morning. Are we really walking as close to God as we ought to? Ask yourself that question.